talk about the structure of the Earth. What's inside and how do we know? The Earth is made up of layers. At the surface, we have the crust. Under the crust is the mantle. Then we have the core, which is divided into the outer core and the inner core. Let's talk about the crust first. Most people might assume that the crust is quite thick. I mean, it is the only thing separating us from boiling hot magma. But nope. The crust is the thinnest layer, ranging between about 6 and 70 kilometers thick. It's kind of like the skin of an apple in comparison to the rest of the apple. Basically, the crust is really, really thin compared to the other layers. The crust is also divided into two types, continental crust and oceanic crust. So what is the difference between the two? Continental crust forms our large land masses and it's what we live on. Oceanic crust, on the other hand, lies under the oceans. Basically, when you look at Earth, any large area of exposed land is continental crust and anything under the ocean is oceanic crust. Here are a few key differences between the two. Continental crust is thicker, while oceanic crust is thinner, as you can see in this diagram. Continental crust is older, while oceanic crust is younger. Continental crust is less dense, while oceanic crust is more dense. This is because of their composition. Continental crust is mostly granite made of silicate and aluminium, also known as sile, which is lighter than oceanic crust, which is mostly basalt and made of silicate and magnesium, known as sema, which is heavier. Next up, we have the mantle. This is the thickest of all the layers, with a measurement of approximately 2,900 kilometers. The mantle contains magma, which is viscous, kind of like a thick syrup. It is not entirely solid or liquid, so we can refer to it as semi-solid or semi-liquid. In the mantle, there is something called convection currents that drive the movement of the crust above it. The heat from the core causes hot magma to rise up to the crust where it cools. The magma then sinks back down to the bottom of the mantle where it is reheated. These cycles continue over and over again and play an important role in continental drift and activity at plate boundaries. Let's move on to our outer core, which is about 2,260 kilometers thick and made up of liquid iron and nickel. It reaches temperatures between 4,000 and 5,000 degrees Celsius. Because the outer core moves around the inner core, the Earth's magnetism is created. Now for the inner core, it has a radius of 1,220 kilometers, which is slightly smaller than our moon. The inner core reaches temperatures of about 5,200 degrees Celsius. To put that into perspective, the surface of the sun has a temperature of about 6,000 degrees Celsius. Simply put, our core is freaking hot. Even with all these high temperatures, the inner core is a solid because of the high pressure it experiences from its surrounding layers. Now that we know what's inside our Earth, let's talk about how we actually know this. Methods at the surface level of our Earth have informed us of what the internal structure looks like. We have used things like drilling, studying different rocks, studying volcanoes, and looking at the composition of lava. However, scientists cannot drill further than the crust, so we've had to explore other options. When earthquakes occur, they release seismic waves that reverberate through the Earth. Scientists can study how these waves bend, reflect, speed up or slow down. Based on this, they can determine if something is a solid or a liquid and how thick it is. This data can then be mapped out and helps us understand what the internal structure of the Earth looks like. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, I would love to see you in my next one. So please click that red subscribe button down below. Thank you to everyone who likes and comments and subscribes. It really, really means so much to have you here with me. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.